You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, God damn it! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And guess what? I've been mojoing with the spirit in the sky and the yard and the... I Actually, I think I pulled something. <laughs> and not just weeds today. Oh, well. I was out hanging out laundry and come barreling in and looked at the clock and went, Oh, crap! So, yeah. <laughs> squirrel squirrel and now it looks like i got some rain moving in so uh, it'll get rain washed as well because it's just gonna have to stay out there i ain't running out to take it back off so y'all are listening to grammy's rocket chair coming at you from the middle of flyover country out here in the boonies <laughs> with my tin can and kite string internet i'm on reallibertymedia.com because they let just about anybody on here <laughs> just about oh well channel 10 too by the way also out there on the Spreaker channel the RLM tune in radio station the RLM internet radio station the RLM radio dot XYZ site and I have no idea where else I know it's going to be on other places later though so ah, there you go and it is a Freaker Friday out here in Grammy land so yay Hey, hi hoes, where where's the where's the hi hoes? Hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. <laughs> moving along. <laughs> yes, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, moving along. Over here in uh, in the Matrix, as a matter of fact. Hi, Seamount Mermaid and Jen Yin. How are you guys doing this evening? Um, and Meta is also here over on in the matrix hope you guys are having an absolutely splendor splendiferous day Ooh, revelation equation is also here cool 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 um on twitter thank you barman for letting everybody know that i am live and in poison and my i don't know about you guys but my stalker count goes up goes down goes up goes down goes up goes down it's like a teeter-totter which makes me dizzy sometimes trying to watch but that's okay it's all good. Oh, look, and now my podcast is live, too. <laughs> Yeehaw! Um, who else do I see? I see a collaborator and a Frankie and a Irma Bell and a, and a, you know, I, I got on Twitter earlier today and I started scrolling and it's like, keep scrolling, keep nothing of interest, keep scrolling, nothing of interest, keep scrolling. And that's pretty much the way the day has been. Nothing of interest. Keep scrolling. Just keep Which, does that really surprise me? Actually, yeah. Usually after about three or four scrolls, because I have a scroller mouse kind of thing, you know, whatever. Um, I usually, after two or three scrolls, find something of interest. But, eh. It just ain't tweaking my hide for some dumb reason over here on mines thank you barman for letting everybody know that i am live over here i don't know of anybody else except for oh there's silk pro usa oh pretty um i did see several really cool memes over here too earlier today um okay that 50 year old thing is paul harvey i i'm i'm Talking to myself and looking at mines. What the hey? There's something really wrong here. Over here on Fakey Book. Hey, Lisa B. and Jodes. How are you guys doing? And Bretta Al. Bretta Al is back in the continental USA. And the lovely Lisa B. I went up and spent the evening at her place and got my color touched up. <laughs> And we had our girl chat time and went out for Mexican food. And oh my lord, I didn't think I ate that much. But man, by the time I finally made that half hour drive home and got to the house, it's like, oh, I got a walla belly. I ate way too much. <laughs> Damn. 
you know, I thought it was Chinese food that did that, but apparently Mexican food does it to you too. Oh, well, I have plenty of fuel for the rocket chair tonight. I do have that. There you go. Um, who else is hanging out over here? Not a whole heck of a lot. Oh, there's Bubs. Hey, Bubs. How you doing? Um, over here on realliberty.org. Once again, thank you, Grimmy, for letting everybody know that, yeah, the wild woman's on. Yeah, she's back. It must be Friday. Um, and Bob Renner is here as well as Rob Works and looks like Mary B was here a couple hours ago over here on freedomsnetwork.com, that effing site. We got some new people showing up and see, Grimmy shared it over here and let everybody know over here that I'm live and in poison. Assange to face five day extradition hearing in February, 2020. I had someone tell me that those of us that wear glasses or contacts can't can't celebrate 2020 <laughs> really what if I only wear my glasses when I'm driving does that make a difference or okay I wear cheaters when I'm reading okay fine I won't celebrate 2020 fine fine be that way I also see Estrella's over here as well as Loki luck three and Vel Smith and Karen Minton. Who are Vel Smith and Karen Minton? They're newbies over here. Hi there. Welcome aboard. Let's see. I've been to Effin. I've been to Mines. I've been to Twitter. I've been to In the Matrix, Fakey Book, Real. I guess that means I got to go to that one place where y'all need to be if you want to give me some static. Over here on reallibertymedia.com. Yeah, think of a nickname, join the chat, give me some static, and I'll give it back. And, yeah, if you're listening in on Spreaker, come on over and do what I just said. Because I can't chat on Spreaker and in this chat, because, well, like I said, tin can, kite string, duct tape. There you go. It's mind over matter. We don't mind because it does not matter. Yeah, that's true. If you don't mind, it don't matter. That is very true. Okay. So, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Grimner, the RLM god, and the lovely Moose Goyal. And they're going to be on late. No, they're not going to be on late. Is it going to be balls to the wall tonight, Grim? What the hell is 2020? <laughs> I had that one time. 69 plus, yeah, two can chew. That's, that's how they say that. <laughs> Free enslaved. <clears throat> it's just like in Hawaii and I asked my brother-in-law and he just laughed at me so I don't know if it's true or not but I asked him if th really the way you say hello in Hawaiian is kamana wanalea because if if that's really how you say that that would be so cool <laughs> it would get me in trouble well, probably make a lot of people laugh in any which is okay that's good I like that people laughing is better than screaming and hollering and yelling and fighting so there you go okay back to saying hey dc is here as well as asmodeus asmo chalcedony is also in the chat as well as free enslaved hi free are you shocked shocked i tell ya i'm also here as well as i be don c java 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 doctor Two, the lovely meister bra <laughs> I'm sure he's going to love it when he hears that one. Testing, one, two, three. There is not a test. Oh, yay. Grimmy says it's going to be a ball-to-the-wall kind of man tonight. That sounds painful, honey. It really does. Moving along. Uh, the lovely Miss Kate is here. Hi, Kate. How you doing, sweetie? I also see Rob Wikes is in the chat. Thank you for firing up that bubbler, dude. Fire up that bubbler. Get everybody cybernetically you know spirit in the sky that way they can get in tune to it just saying uh trust no one is here as well as the lovely miss vanna white the letter turner bot of the chat also we got a weather dork that's letting us know what the weather's doing whether you want to hear it or not well if you if you type in the little command weather dork will tell you whether you want to know or not i don't know why you type in the command but whatever Oh, it was a bike accident. Ouch. <laughs> Hi, Beth Z. How are you doing, honey? I also see Phantom is here as well as Arakara. 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 Hi, Arakara. I think. 
I probably butchered that name. I'm sorry. Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How you doing, sweetie? I also see the lovely Cycles is here. It's kind of late for you, Cycles, isn't it? We got some cyborg noodle going on, and may you be touched by his noodly goodness, seeing as how it is the Pastafarian Holy Day, where heaven has beer volcanoes and strippers everywhere, which could be quite scary, actually. Moving along, Dakota and Frumped. Two, you were frumped too. Is that like, was that double the pleasure, double the fun? Do I want to know? I think I'll move along. Hi, Frumpy. How are you doing, honey? I also see Gromit is in the chat as well as JJ's. No, 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 JJ's. Hi, you Scottish feller, you. The lovely kiss with the underscore. I wonder if that's an extended kiss. Or maybe that's a little tongue action going on. Move along. Moy, 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 moy is also here as well as rounding out the crew. The smartass of the chat. Let's go see in the red pill. Who might be hanging? Oh, free enslaved left. 420. 420. Dude. Okay. F. Canella is over here in the red pill as well as frumped. And Juana Taco and Katie Troxel and Ventures, those that were not in the Real Liberty Chitty Chat. And now it's time to get to, you know, that spirit in the sky. Because, you know, sometimes you just plain got to go there. And I'm thinking Grandmother Moon, Sister Moon, whatever you want to call it, depending on what kind of be life system you have. And not life as an L-I-F-E, as an L-I-E-F. Because there's a little lie in every bee life. <clears throat> so over here on sandwichespsychmeds.com, I like the name of the channel or of the site. So that, that and the title of the article, which I know, you know, I get those headlines. That's why they're called headlines, because they get into your head and they drag you right in. I'm hoping this one doesn't mess me up. Doozer, get off the table. I'm going to have to throw something at the cat. <laughs> she seems to think that since she's 21 years old, she can do whatever she damn well pleases. Darling, start paying some rent around here and maybe you can. Move it along. So over here on sandwichespsychmeds.com. <clears throat> The spirit in the sky, a.k.a. full moon, it is sick of everyone blaming their problems on it. I can understand. So, finally exhausted with humans' bullshit excuses, the moon has released an official statement denying any and all responsibility for issues that happened on Earth when the moon is full, which is in a couple of days. I, the moon, am done being your punching bag. Kids are being heathens. Must be the moon. Dogs won't stop barking. Must be the moon. Although around my place, I always blame butterfly farts. But moving along. Customers making weird requests today at work. People dr driving like maniacs. Must be a full moon. Well... First thing, first, earthlings, I am always full, always, just because I may look like a crescent moon or a half moon or a full moon from your tiny human perspective, I promise I'm not going on a yo-yo diet. This is me, all of me, just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not there. Secondly, Take some damn responsibility for your own life. Sure, I'm pretty powerful. You know, with the gravitational pull, tides, making romantic scenes and movies look cooler. I get it. But you really need to own your choices. Are your kids whining a lot tonight and refusing to go to bed? Well, how much sugar did you bribe them with today, huh? Huh? Think about that bar of chocolate you used to keep them from punching each other at the grocery store. Wasn't going to have some repercussions, you think? <laughs> Guess what? This one's on you. Oh, the dogs bark? Yeah, they always bark. They also bark when you are too lazy to train them. 
I may be glowing bright tonight, but it's a good thing one of us has the lights on upstairs. So smarten up and deal with your dog. Now, as for weird or maniacal people, I don't know. People are weird all the time. And no one drives all that well. I can see you guys down there. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am mooning again. Blue moon. Actually, it's a strawberry moon, which means it might my, my should have seen some sunlight. And that, that don't see sunlight. Sorry. Not unless it's through a veil of clothing. <laughs> Moving along. Plus, maybe you're just grouchy because you stayed up too late last night binge-watching The Marvelous Miss Maisel. Which is a great show, don't get me wrong. But you do understand that you can pause it, right? Or maybe you're hungover or generally a cranky person, which has absolutely nothing to do with me and my fullness. In closing, leave me alone. You planted your flag in me, took my rocks, wrote little ditties about me for the amusement of toddlers, and I haven't said a word. I'm polite like that, but seriously... Pull your shit together and stop pretending shadows dictate your life. Moon out. Now, <clears throat> this does go on to say that the moon was unavailable for further comment as it had pulled the clouds over its head and honestly is too, too tired to deal with you anymore. So, thank you ever so much, Sandwiches and Psych Meds, for bringing us this exclusive from the moon. Because I'm sure she is just sick and tired. Sick and tired. You ever notice that when someone says sick and tired, almost always follows behind it. So, see, everybody's blaming the moon for the craziness. But I got to tell you, there's some craziness going on. And, and I'm thinking that whole finger pointing thing where the, you got three fingers pointing right back at yourself. Yeah, this next one. Yeah, that's most definitely. This is from Reason.com. California politicians hiked gas tax. Now they demand an investigation into state's $4 per gallon gas prices. Huh, I wonder how that happened. It couldn't have been us. Obviously. Obviously, the edge of McCraption that they got out in California just really ain't cutting it anymore. Either that or they all subscribe to Common Core Math. One of the two. In any case, as Lieutenant Governor Gavin Newsom supported a 2017 bill increasing the state's gas taxes, when running for governor in 2018, he opposed a ballot initiative that would have repealed that same increase. Well, now it's 2019, and Newsom, now the state's governor, is demanding an investigation into why the state's gas prices are so freaking high. On Tuesday, the governor sent a letter to the California Energy Commission, or CEC, asking that the state agency investigate the Golden State's roughly $4.03 per gallon gas prices, currently the highest in the country, and well above the national average of $2.86 per gallon. Jeepers. I have no clue. <laughs> Dumbasses. Now, independent analysis suggests that an unaccounted for price differential exists in California gas prices and that this price differential may stem in part from inappropriate industry practices. This is according to Newsom in his letter to the CEC. In other words, gobbledygook, 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 blah, 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 blah. Now, he goes on to say these are all important reasons for the commission to shed light on what's going on in our gasoline market. Y'all are very bad at math. That's what it is. Now, he is not alone in wanting answers for this difficult head scratcher. <laughs> okay, my head ain't scratching, but I washed my hair, so maybe that's why. In January... 
19 senators, 17 of whom had voted in favor of the 2017 gas tax increase, while the other two had only entered office in 2018, sent a letter to the state attorney general, Xavier uh, Becerra demanding that the state's Department of Justice or DOJ investigate the unexplained gasoline surcharge that is estimated to cost California families $1,700 a year. How much was that tax increase again? Huh. Now, California currently imposes, this, imposes the second highest gas taxes in the country. A state excise tax currently adds 40, uh, okay, 0. 0.417 cents per gallon. Whatever happened to the little cent sign? Now they always have to do the dollar and then the decimal point. What happened to the little cent sign? I like the little cent sign. It's a hell of a lot easier to put when you're typing than C-E-N-T-S. I know I'm lazy. My fingers are lazy, okay? Sue me. Or not. In any case, um, a rate that will in that rate will increase to uh, 0.473 come July. Oh no! Now on top of that, the state imposes a 2.25 percent gasoline sales tax. In addition, California has adopted a carbon fuel standard and a cap and trade scheme for carbon emissions, which together increase the state's gas prices by 24 cents per gallon, above the national average. That's according to a 2017 state government report. Now, that same report maintained that even after all these state-imposed costs are tallied up, California's gas prices remain above the national average. A finding that both uh, those 19 state senators and Newsom are using to justify their demands for an investigation. Now, Newsom, as mentioned, alleged that there may be inappropriate industry practices at play. You know, state lawmakers in their January letter suggested that the state's retail gasoline market might lack robust competition, leading motorists to pay more at the pump. I don't know that it's necessarily robust competition as so much as it is maybe, let's see, increased property tax rates and all kinds of other tax rates that you guys got going that are, that are those costs that get figured into trying to at least make a penny on a gallon. Uh, call me crazy, but you know, I do kind of understand some of this business stuff. Now, <clears throat> it does go on to say, however, a lot of the higher non-government imposed prices Californians are paying currently could plausibly be chalked up to normal supply and demand. Yeah, because you got all you dang breathers out there that are driving like crazy. The, just ask the moon. She sees you. Local media reports point to the twin effects of increasing demand and springtime maintenance at the state's refineries as contributing to the price hikes. The late March shutdown of the Valero refinery in the Bay Area added to price hikes, and something similar happened in 2015 when an explosion at the Torrance refinery in Los Angeles County caused the facility, then responsible for refining 10% of the state's gas, to close for over a year. Prior to that 2015 explosion, California's gasoline price premium tracked closely with the higher taxes and production costs. That's according to Severin Borenstein, who's a professor at the University of California, Berkeley's Haas School of Business. Now, after Torrance explosion, prices spiked and then slowly began coming down over the next year. Although they, to this day, remain higher than they were prior to the incident. Why? Because they can. That's why. Industry representatives maintain that any difference in the state's gas prices can be explained by normal market forces and, of course, all those taxes and regulations. You think those things don't have an effect down the road? Duh. Oh, wait. Wait. This is, is this a, one of those, the law of unintended consequences things, or is this an Urkel moment? Did I do that? 
Apparently, the premium industry on the West Coast has been subject to dozens of independent investigations by government agencies. Who pays for all of those investigations? All of which conclude the dynamics of supply and demand are responsible for movements in the price of gasoline and diesel fuel. That's according to Kevin Slagle, who's a spokesperson for the Western States Petroleum Association. And in a statement also added that state programs such as cap and trade and the low carbon fuel standard impact fluctuations in energy markets. Uh huh. The more rules you make, the more difficult it is, and the more people that have to be hired, which makes the cost of doing business go up, which means that the prices go up. Duh. It should be pointed out um, that high levels of taxation and regulation and a lack of competition in the state's fuel sector are not mutually exclusive explanations. Government fees and red tape often have the effect of squeezing out marginal producers and retailers, giving or giving re remaining firms greater ability to raise prices. Mm -hmm. Get rid of the little guy, the little mom and pops, and then you get the other ones that they can buy it because they buy in bulk, so they get a little bit of cut. But yet, oh, it's a vicious circle, vicious cycle. And regardless of any mystery surcharge on California gas, the fact remains that state government policies are a huge component of the final price everyone is paying at the pump. Indeed. In the case of the state's cap and trade scheme, where the state caps the amount of allowable carbon emissions and then auctions off emission credits, oh damn, the state's got one hell of a pee and shell game going on. The explicit purpose is to raise the cost of emitting carbon, thus burning gasoline. Huh. Absent these policies, the state's gas prices would be lower. But they don't see that because they're busy looking at the palm of their hand, those lines in there. They can't see nothing past it. Now, clearly, for many of the California politicians, the benefits of state policies aimed at producing cleaner air quality, mitigating climate change, and generating more revenue for road maintenance and light rail expansion surpass the cost of higher gas prices. How's that light rail expansion going, by the way? How much have you lost on that? <sighs> oh, well, if that's the case, however, Newsom and others should make that case to voters directly and explicitly instead of trying to appease motorists' anger by pointing their fingers at industry. In other words, the whole finger pointing thing. Every time you point the finger of shame and blame at someone else, you got three fingers pointing right back at you. Deal with it. <laughs> Ah, oh, Frank Zappa. Uh, Frank Zappa's been gone for a while, honey. And um, dun, dun, dun. yes, Grim, the full moon is Monday, but I won't be on the radio Monday. I will be a busy girl next week, basically. So, <sighs> moving along. Now, seeing as how I've had the California thing, and you know the moon ripping our backsides, basically the moon ripping our moon. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a junk out, chewing on some. I ran across this one as well. This is from Scientific America, just so you don't think that I'm just all fluffing nonsense. <laughs> the hippies were right. It's all about vibrations. See? Scientific American. Yeah. So, why are some things conscious and others apparently not? Is a rat conscious, a bat, a cockroach, a bacterium, an electron? These questions are all aspects of the ancient mind-body problem, which has resisted a generally satisfying conclusion for thousands of years. Now, the mind-body problem employed a major rebranding over the last two decades and is generally known as the hard problem of consciousness, usually capitalized nowadays and uh, 
That's after the New York University philosopher David Chalmers coined the term in the now classic 1995 paper and his 1996 book, The Conscious Mind, In Search of a Fundamental Theory. I, do you have a conscious mind? <laughs> if you don't mind, it don't matter. Now, fast forward to the present era, and we can ask ourselves, did the hippies actually solve this problem? And my colleague, Jonathan Schooler of the University of California, Santa Barbara, oh, another one of those <clears throat> fruits and nuts. Apparently, they um, think that they effectively did with the radical intention or intuition that it's all about vibrations, man. And over the past decade, we've developed a resonance theory of consciousness that suggests that resonance, another word for synchronized vibrations, kind of like synchronized swimming, only you can't watch it. It is at the heart of not only human consciousness, but of physical reality generally. Cool. So, how were the hippies, right? Well, we agree that vibrations and resonance are the key mechanisms behind human consciousness, as well as animals' consciousness more generally. And, as you discussed below, that they are the basic mechanism for all physical interactions to occur. Huh. Now, all things in our universe are constantly in motion, and they are vibrating. Even objects that appear to be stationary are, in fact, vibrating, oscillating, resonating, and at various frequencies. And I really do think, and I listened to something earlier today, I really think that this whole physicality thing, that is the result of that vibrating, oscillating, resonating frequencies. Are you starting to feel it? <laughs> no, that's not my Mexican food from last night. Now, resonance is a type of motion characterized by oscillation between two states. And ultimately, all matter is just vibrations of various underlying fields. An interesting phenomenon occurs when different vibrating things and processes come into proximity. They will often start, after a little time, to vibrate together at the same frequency. They sync up and sometimes in ways that can seem mysterious. This is described today as the phenomenon of spontaneous self-organization. I, I, I was trying to think of a smart-ass remark to that, but just nothing fell out. Nothing spontaneous, at least. I'll think of it at 2 in the morning. Now, examining this phenomenon leads to potentially deep insights about the nature of consciousness and about the universe more generally. Oh, well, here we go. So, Stephen Strogatz, Strogatz provides various examples from physics, biology, chemistry, and neuroscience that illustrate what he calls sync or synchrony in his 20, 2000, excuse me, 2003 book called Sync. Why do they call it 2017, but they don't call it 2003? Instead, it's 2003, so why can't it be 2017? Maybe it's all just a bunch of stuff and nonsense. Oh, that's a whole different storyline. Did you know that fireflies of certain species start flashing their little fires in sync in large gatherings of fireflies? In ways that can be difficult to explain under traditional approaches. I just want to see a firefly. We haven't had enough. Mo I know I've been bitching about rain, but we haven't had enough moisture to really have fireflies. I'm bummered. Large-scale neuron firing can occur in human brains at specific frequencies, with mammalian consciousness thought to be commonly associated with various kinds of neuronal synchrony. Neuron What's neuronal synchrony? Oh, Grimmy says he's more on the spontaneous disorganization side. I like that, Grim. I like that. I, I, I think I'll own that one myself. Because <laughs> I can be spontaneously disorganized, just at the drop of a hat. 
Oh, wait, that's what's spontaneous. Moving along. Lasers are produced when photons of the same power and frequency are emitted together. <laughs> Moving along. The moon's rotation is exactly synced with the orbit around the Earth, such that we always see the same face. And yet, and yet, where is that dark side of the moon? Now, resonance is truly a universal phenomenon. And at the heart of what can sometimes seem like mysterious tendencies towards self-organization. You know, like the Pascal Fries, um, a German neurophysicist or physiologist, excuse me, with Ernst Strungmann Institute, has explored in his highly cited work over the last two decades, the ways in which various electrical patterns, specifically gamma, theta, and beta waves, work together in the brain to produce the various types of human consciousness. Wow. I wondered what all that noise was going on in there. Now, these names refer to the speed of electrical oscillations in the various brain regions. My brain's oscillating. How cool is that? As measured by electrodes placed on the outside of the skull. Gamma waves, I prefer to call them gamma waves, but the, whatever. Throw the R in or not, I don't care. They're typically defined as 30 to 90 cycles per second. Theta as 4 to 7 hertz or cycles per second. And beta is 12.5 to 30 hertz or cycles per second. Now, these aren't hard cutoffs. They're just rules of thumb. And they vary somewhat in different species. Where did this, okay, squirrel moment here, but where did this rule of thumb thing come from? Is it the width of your thumb, or is it because you did the thumbs up, or is it the thumbs down, or the, where did this rule of thumb come from? I'm just curious. I see that all the time. And it's like, where the hell did that come from? So, theta and beta are significantly slower than gamma waves. Mm -hmm. But the three work together to produce, or at least facilitate, you know, they're not real sure on the exact relationship, the various types of human consciousness. Now, Fries calls his concept communication through coherence. <laughs> you have to be coherent in order to communicate. Okay. For Fries, it's all about neuronal synchronization. The synchronization in terms of shared electrical oscillation rates, which allows for smooth communication between neurons and groups of neurons. Every time I see neurons, I think morons. I don't know why, but it just it's just the connection I get in my brain. Now, without coherence or synchronization, input arrives at random place or at random phases of the neuron excitability cycle and are ineffective or at least much less effective in communication. <laughs> I'm liking this excitability cycle. This is kind of cool. This could be fun. I'm, I'm feeling very smart just being able to read through some of this, but man, then finding out there's excitability cycles as well. Cool. Now, our resonance theory of, con of consciousness builds upon the work of Fry's and many others, and in the broader approach, it can help to explain not only human and mammalian consciousness, but also consciousness more broadly. And we also speculate metaphysically about the nature of consciousness as a more general phenomenon of all matter. So, based on the observation or the observed behavior of the entities that surround us, from electrons to atoms to molecules to bacteria to um, permesia to mice to bats to rats and all kinds of other fun little creepy crawler things, all things may be viewed as at least a little conscious. Now, this sounds strange at first blush, but what's What's panpsychism? Okay. Apparently, it's the view that all matter has some associated consciousness. Well, I would think that whatever created this universe, you can't create something without putting a little bit of yourself in it. And so, therefore, the consciousness that created this, all of this, has got a little bit of itself in everything that's here. My thoughts. So... 
It is an increasingly accepted position with respect to nature of consciousness. So the next time you stub your toe on a rock or something, look down at the rock and go, yo, dude, seriously, that hurt. Couldn't you have moved? It might answer you back. Don't be freaked if it does. Now, this also argues that consciousness or subjectivity does not emerge, but rather it's always associated with matter and vice versa. They're two sides of the same coin. But mind, as associated with most of the matter in our universe, is generally very simple. Yeah, my mind, yeah, pretty much. It's, it's either, okay, that works for me or that doesn't. That's pretty much the way my mind works. Now, an electron or an atom, for example, enjoy just a tiny amount of consciousness. But they're very, very tiny, so that could be a massive amount, amount of consciousness when you look at it to scale. <clears throat> but as a matter of um, com comp what I I have no idea what that word is. Complexifies. Okay. So the mind complexifies and vice versa. Hmm. So. Is that a word? I know I make up words all the time, but complexifies? Who made that one up? Because, wow, it made my brain stumble. Now, <clears throat> to carry on with this. Biological organisms have leveraged faster information exchange through various biophysical pathways, including electrical and electrochemical pathways. And these faster information flows allow for more macro scale levels of consciousness than would occur in similar scale structures like boulders or a pile of sand, simply because there is significantly greater connectivity and thus more going on in biological structures than in a boulder or a pile of sand. How do you know? Are you looking at it from the perspective of the boulder or the pile of sand? I don't think so. I think you're being just a wee bit consciousness con condescending. That was hard to say. Now, boulders and piles of sands are mere aggregates. Oh, don't be calling them mere. Yeah. Next, next time you get around some, what if they all get together and decide to fall on you? Not going to be so mere then, is it? Or just a collection of rudimentary conscious entities. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Go ahead. Keep talking down to them. Yeah, yeah. It'll come back to bite you in the ass. Mm-hmm. Now... It says rather than this is rather than combinations of micro conscious entities that combine into higher level macro conscious entities, which is the hallmark of biological life. So says you. But it takes an awful lot of macro to make a micro. Or a lot of, no, backwards. That was best backwards. A lot of micro to make a macro. And so, kinda like macrame. Wow, my mind went there. Now accordingly the type of communication between resonating structures is key for consciousness to expand beyond the rudimentary type of consciousness that we expect to occur in more basic physical structures. So the central, central thesis of their pr approach is the particular linkages that allow for macro consciousness to occur result from a shared resonance among many micro conscious constituents. Ta da! And the speed of the resonant waves that are present is the limiting factor that determines the size of each conscious entity. So says you, Mr. Big Conscious Entity. I don't know if there's more. Yeah, there's more of this, but I'm going to let you finish reading it because it's like, dude, seriously, look at it from the perspective of the little guys. You know, it's like a per capita kind of thing. How much consciousness do they? Oh, there you go. Thank you, Rob Works. Complexify to make complex or usually needlessly. Yeah, that's very true. It is needlessly complexified. <laughs> Micro macaroni. I like that. And you know what becomes bigger macaroni? You just add more water or let it soak a little bit longer. Call it tow truck. <laughs> That's right. It's good vibrations, free enslaved. Okay. So Scientific American just, just really, I thought they were very condescending. 
to those poor little boulders and, and pieces of sand. Have you ever walked across a really hot sandy beach? And you say sandy beach? <laughs> I have. Or have you ever gone swimming and you get sand in your... Yeah, I have. Tell me that's not conscious. Tell me that's not... Yeah, that's that. That's what I call payback for being all condescending. That's what I call it. Now, over here to the pig. <laughs> I needed a segue. And that was as good as I got. So, over here on PIGazette.com, where Hambo and Porcus reign supreme. And usually order supreme pizza to go with their beer in the pig bunker. But, <clears throat> according to them, the word of the day is promiscuous. It's the aspect of your past that gets downgraded to serial monogamy on your online dating profile. Oh, is that what it does? Huh. I've only been with... <laughs> you know, if you, if you say that you can count them on both hands, that really doesn't say that it's just ten. It just means that it takes both hands, and they don't. you don't tell someone how many times it takes both hands. <laughs> <laughs> promiscuous according to grams in the quotable quotes section treat your past as a book that you learned from instead of a hammer that you beat yourself up with bill whittle i like that i like that and lisa b and i had several discussions along those lines last night yes that is thank you bill whittle i like that one and da, da, scrolling down to this date in history on the 14th of june 1623 gerville was sicily sicily gerville was sicily okay he pops the question and she says yes sicily thinks it's over backs out gerville is sore loser files first breach of promise lawsuit and loses. Wow, leave it to the Italians to start that crap. Thanks, guys. This date in history, the 14th of June, 1834. Isaac Fisher Jr. of Springfield, Vermont, is fed up with things that rub him the wrong way. Kind of like sand that got in your swimsuit after you went swimming. <laughs> and gets back by patenting a goodie that we know as sandpaper. Oh, crap! Thanks, Isaac, because that's what it feels like. <laughs> Is that a TMI moment? Oh, well. And finally, this date in history, the 14th of June, 1846. California declares independence from Mexico. In the 21st century, Mexico is taking it back. They can have it. <laughs> Those people are mathematically challenged. They have no reasoning skills whatsoever. <sighs> oh my what is this um i'm looking over here on the side at their um top story the mega musings mega musing but it was over on the side and it was the uh, the fate of american greatness in the hands of pigsters Hmm. Since we, the pigs, first wrote the pu and published this rant, a lot has happened to further erode our American greatness. Let's see what eroded our American greatness. I wonder if they spell that G-R-E-A-T or G-R-A-T-E-N-E-S-S. -E -S. That's almost like N-E-S-T-L-E-S. -E -E what comes out and moving along? So, the government cesspools, chickens, uh, the, uh, let me start this over again. The government cesspool chickens have come home to roost with the emergence of infamous low information voter. Yeah. Our history is under attack as a revisionists replace fact with fiction while roaming leftist mobs tear down histo historical monuments. I'm thinking hysterical monuments, but how do we know history is just his story? You know, and it was accepted by the masses, probably a mass delusion or whatever. American education system is cranking out mindless, perpetually offended, compulsive, thumb-sucking cringers at alarming numbers. I got nothing on that one. Uh, nothing to add on that. Our freedom of speech is silenced by trigger warnings, microaggression, and rampaging Antifa thugs. Yeah. 
anti-fascists who are behaving in the most fascistic way well not the most fascist i'm sure someone else you know you want a better fascist or you build a better fascist trap and someone will build a better fascist it's just the way the world works so far from sea to shining sea card-carrying members of the jackass party openly defy demean and destroy the u.s constitution they haven't followed it since day one this is nothing new. In newsrooms across America, propagandists masquerading as journalists parrot the jackass party's talking points. Okay, that's pretty... Yeah. If they don't want to suffer a severe case of Arkansas, that's what they do. The swamp rat continues to undermine and or alienate our friends while strengthening and emboldening our enemies. Well, with friends like that, who needs enemas? Dangleberry Death Care has begun to perform its prime function, which is eradication of the insurance industry, the destruction of health care in America. Health care has gone downhill since the beginning of the 19th century. Just saying. Actually, beginning of the 20th century. I sit corrected. And insurance, to me, insurance is a con job. That's all insurance is. You know, somebody sold you a piece of paper and said, we will pay for it. If you pay us so much a month, we'll pay when this happens. But what they don't tell you is when this happens, then they hike up what you pay them every month because, you know, we've got to cover expenses. And then they drop you if you make one claim and something happens in your area and they're afraid you're going to make another claim. They drop your sorry ass. That's how insurance works. It's a scheme. How about instead of giving that money? Oh, wait a minute here. How about we just get rid of the whole money system? That would be really cool. But, you know, there's a lot of people that are, there are so many <laughs> little strands of web attached to that right now. It's going to be very, very difficult to get rid of that. But, yeah, yeah. Let's eradicate the insurance industry and the healthcare system is now death care anyway so the only reason that they do any of that stuff is because well they can make a dime and make repeat customers too oh and they also say ignoring the constitution black robe marxists poop out judicial rulings based on the personal politics making a mockery of the judicial system once again before the ink was dried this was going on with the constitution it just was. The ongoing assault on our American greatness from within is taking a heavy toll on the liberty that we cherish. That heavy toll is, wow. The looming tyranny is much closer now, close enough for even the willfully blind Obamanists to see if they'd only get up off their knees and look at the drastically altered American landscape. Yeah, I would say it's drastically altered. And I would say that, yeah, What's that? I don't remember the movie that that speech is from, but oh my goodness. America hasn't been great for a very long time. And at least not spelled G-R-E-A-T. Spell it G-R-A-T-E. And yeah. It's all about the spelling, casting spells on you. So, they go on to say, have we passed the point of no return? perhaps, but I refuse to etch R.I.P. on the inalienable individual liberty's tombstone. The heroes of Benghazi, the, the courageous gun-toting mama in Georgia, the unwavering mask of or wisdom of Mark Levine, give me reason to believe that American greatness might make a comeback, even at this late date. And we the people will need to do some heavy lifting to get her done. Well, you know, that's true. We the people need to do some heavy lifting to get her done. And that heavy lifting is called taking back your own responsibility. Poisonal responsibility for your own actions, your own words. That's a heavy load. It really is. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com. 
RLMNumnum.com, Channel 10. Also on all kinds of other RLMNumnum places and later to be on the RLM YouTube channel, the RLM BitChute channel, and on iHeartRadio. Is that right, Grim? I hope, I think, possibly. Later this evening, it's going to be balls to the wall because the lovely Miss Moose Goyle is out blue oxen. Wow. I just won't go there. No, I won't. And tomorrow at noon Eastern Time is the Dork Table with Flash a Rooney Dork. I hope y'all have a good time. I'm going to be busy, busy, busy. On Sunday at noon Eastern Time, Grimner is going to be jumping on the radio and playing some blues for y'all. And directly following him will be Hal Anthony, who's going to open up a can of whoop ass on yo ass. Behind the Woodshed. Then on Monday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Grimner is going to be on with some leftovers. Yay, Grimmy! Those are always tasty mind food leftovers. And I might actually be back home from my mother's in time to get to listen. Not real sure. I will not be doing a rocket chair Wednesday or Friday of next week. I will be grandbabying and mama in and daughter in and... I'll be family timing. So, until we meet again, or see you in the funny papers, however the case may be, please remember, I truly do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.